This week on TTC News, Proof Research has a fancy new bolt gun, Rock Island sells a set of guns worth more than your life, and SIG is suing Springfield. Kinetic Development Group has been leading the charge on innovation for a long time, and they are a one-stop shop for everything related to the FN SCAR. Whether you need a scarging handle, an MREX rail, or maybe a sweet quick detach optic mount. KDG has all of that and more. And if you use the code TGC10 over at kineticdg.com, you'll get 10% off your entire order. Welcome back to another episode of the Gun Collective News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Now, how about some news? First up this week, a uh, bolt action that is bound to be pricey and good at the same time. It's by Proof Research, and you may know them as one of the premier carbon fiber barrel companies. That being said, it's called the Tundra, and according to their website, the Tundra rifle brings the adjustability and performance of a tactical rifle into a long-range hunting platform. Okay, so where are the parts that get them to that claim? Well, for starters, it has a carbon fiber stock with an adjustable cheek piece, a defiance action made it up to a proof barrel, a trigger tech trigger, and it comes with their standard sub half MOA guarantee. Weights range with caliber from seven pounds, three ounces up to eight pounds, six ounces. Speaking of calibers, you can get this in 11 different options ranging from six Creedmoor up to 330 Lapua. And here's the part that's gonna hurt. The price starts at $6,999, AKA seven grand. It goes up slightly for some of the different Cerakote colors that you can get. To me, the concept is really cool. Lightweight, purpose-built, precision hunting rifles are something that I enjoy. I think that's great. However, $7,000 is a lot of money for a lot of people to spend on one rifle. And before someone leaves a comment talking about how we only cover expensive gear, I can't force people to make the more affordable stuff and then actually tell me about it. Those two things have to happen for me to cover it on the news program. Huh? That's how that works. I try to cover stuff across the board in terms of price and style, but we can't win them all. Anyway, I want to know what you guys think about this rifle and rifles like it. Do you think it's worth the cash? Proof does make some really nice stuff, so is it checking those boxes for you. You guys, it's probably this direction. If not, why not? Sound off in the comments section and let's talk about it. Moving on from there, let's go even more expensive. <laughs> let's talk about some guns that cost more than most people's houses. Rock Island Auction is one of the premier gun auctions in the world and they've been super cool and kept me aware of some of their more unique sales recently. Shout out to Joel for that. I figured since it's a uh, lighter news week in terms of new products, let's hit some crazy expensive old ones, right? Let's start with the least expensive of this particular group. At a whopping $316,250, a Type 1 FG42, one of my bucket list guns. Moving on from there, bringing a staggering $322,000. Serial number nine of the Colt M1911. Can you imagine someone bragging about their 1911 and you just being like, yeah, whatever, I got the ninth one they ever made. <laughs> Moving on from there at $488,750, Bat Masterson's custom Colt single action army wheel gun. He was famous for his exploits in the American Old West. That thing's cool too. Nearly half a million dollars. Crazy, right? And it was outdone by a pair of guns that are extremely special to both gun guys and American historians alike. A pair of flintlock pistols that belonged to Alexander Hamilton, one of the founding fathers of this country, author of the Federalist Papers, and shot by Vice President Burr in a duel. These belong to him. They brought in a whopping $1,150,000. That is a silly amount of money. And honestly, they're probably worth every penny. I'm not going to pretend like I'm a history nerd. Shout out to High Caliber History for that kind of stuff. But I certainly can appreciate such 
relics and the significance that they hold. Funny enough, though, I'd rather have the FG-42 over all of the other ones. I, really, I'd rather have that gun over anything else. We've got a bunch of industry news this week. Remington is back up and running in their Ilion, New York factory. Reports say that they brought back about 230 of the previously laid off employees and started cranking out 870 shotguns. Let's hope they hired some good QC people to make sure that the relaunch of the brand isn't full of crappy guns. Also in industry news, Troy Industries has announced that they are moving out of communist Massachusetts and heading to Clarksville, Tennessee. They are projecting about 75 new jobs in that area. I know Troy has some controversy attached to their name, but gun companies getting out of commie states is never a bad thing. And rounding out our industry news is a little bit of drama. Sieg announced recently that they are filing a lawsuit against Springfield Armory for patent infringement. According to their press release, Sieg alleges that Springfield Armory's making and selling of certain Hellcat branded magazines infringes upon two Sig patents. Sig Sauer is seeking injunctive relief, as well as monetary damages for Springfield Armory's past and ongoing infringement. So basically, they copy features of the 365 magazine, and Sig wants them to stop and also give them money. That's not where it ends, though. Springfield publicly responded to those claims with the president of the company stating, we feel that these claims are frivolously litigious in nature and designed to thin out the competition in an increasingly crowded firearms market. So Springfield says that SIG is salty, that the Hellcat is selling well, and they're trying to do something about it legally. Okay, so let's get the back and forth and look at the two mags together. On the right is the Hellcat magazine and on the left is the 365. We tried to line them up as close as we could. They do look fairly similar at first glance. I was unable to track down exactly which patents are allegedly being infringed because I couldn't get into the court case, but we shall see how this one pans out. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. This week, our good guy with a gun is again a woman. We've been covering a bunch of ladies defending themselves lately, and that's awesome. This time, we are transported to a northwest suburb of Houston, Texas, on May 8th. Around 12.15 p.m., a 29-year-old, reportedly gathering his belongings from an ex-girlfriend's house, got aggressive and started headbutting and choking the 29-year-old female. She managed to get away, grab a gun, and stop the threat, which ended the attacker's life. To me, this is a fairly straightforward case. Going on the data provided, the woman's life was at risk, and she took it upon herself to terminate that risk immediately. It's very important to me that we highlight things like this at a time when firearms are being called into question politically. It is a tool that can save lives, and this is a prime example of that. I want to hear from you guys on this one. Was shooting the ex-boyfriend the right move? Is there another way to handle it? I know how I feel. I want to know how you guys feel. Let me know your thoughts down in the clickety-clack. <laughs> I'm so dumb. GunTuber of the Week continues this week. If you don't know, GunTuber of the Week is a segment where I share a gun-related channel that by our standards, which are admittedly really high, puts out high-quality, entertaining, informative content on a regular basis. That being said, our GunTuber of the Week this time is Focus Trip. This channel is all about reviewing gear you can actually afford, whether it's cheap uppers, cheap red dots, or other affordable gear. They've probably looked at it. Not only that, but there's also a strong focus, get it, on cinematic cool guy shots while maintaining a clean presentation overall and not sliding into tryhard territory. I think you guys will really like this one. Here's a clip. Today we're going to be talking about the Vortex Spark AR Red Dot. That it has a huge halo on it, even outside we're in direct sunlight up here in Capitol Forge. So with all of that out of the way now, let's go ahead and talk about the Holosun 503CU. If you are into gear that isn't going to break the bank, you guys definitely need to go find the link 
to his channel down in the description and get subscribed and be sure to tell him TGC sent you. Sylvan Arms makes parts for your gun right here in the USA. Whether you're looking for a side folding adapter or maybe a flared magwell, or maybe something to shoot nine out of your standard AR lower, they've got you covered. Sylvan Arms is an affordable alternative to many popular parts on the market right now. And to make it more affordable, use our code TGC10 over at sylvanarms.com to get 10% off your entire order. It's time for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer questions from you guys. This time our questions are coming from YouTube. I asked for your questions and you guys delivered. Our first question is from PB82 and they said, will we see another TGC panel? For those of you that aren't aware, we put on a big event every year. Check it out. Yes, at least I hope to do that. The plan as of right now is to have another one in Houston in September, but we haven't locked anything down just yet. I will let you guys know when we do that. So stay tuned. While Bill says, what is your preferred whiskey? I'm going to be honest. I'm still learning about whiskey from my friend Les, who goes by Burns So Good on Instagram. Go check him out. He's got a massive collection of stuff, and I am out of my depth when it comes to that. The best I can say right now is that I love a good whiskey ginger ale. <laughs> That's kind of my jam. Megan Eli says, what is your favorite movie that you never get tired of watching? That's that's actually a tough question. I'll do like a top three, I guess. It's changing all the time. Tommy Boy, Major League and Office Space. Aaron J says, would we as gun owners be wasting our time trying to bring back the NRA the way it used to be? Or would we be better off getting GOA or FPC to take over the role? I think I might need a longer video about this. I might need to do that. The NRA needs to be rebuilt correctly. I don't think it's as simple as telling folks on the internet to swap over to a new gun rights group. The NRA is spider webbed through the gun industry like creeping vines and to pretend like that could just be replaced without a load of money and work dumped into it really, really fast. That's just being short-sighted. It's not like, Go GOA. Like, that's a thing that people have said. That it's just not that simple, unfortunately. Let me know if you guys want me to do a deeper dive on that on an episode of The Fight for Gun Rights. Also, watch that show right here on this channel if you haven't already. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. What do you think is the best small double stack gun out there? Is it the 365, the Hellcat, the Shield Plus, the Max 9, or maybe something else that might be coming this week? Sound off in the comments below. And if you want to ask a friendly fire question, jump over to theguncollective.com and send it our way. If you enjoyed this show and you want to see a promo free version, check us out on floatplane.com. And after you click the like button, be sure to hit the secret affiliate link in the description. That'd be a massive help. It supports the channel and we would love you for it. And of course, don't forget to get subscribed for more gun news every single week. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show, and the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.